Okay, this is going to be a introduction or an overview to the Trilinos libraries distributed by Sandia National Labs. And then also an introduction to Pi Trilinos, which is actually just one of the packages, a part of Trilinos, and gives us some functionality available in Python. And uh, this is just going to be a very short introduction to Pi Trilinos. And then over the next few lectures, we'll have a sort of individual um, in more in-depth uh, introductions into the pa packages that are available to Pi Trilinos. So the Trilinos project is a set of open source libraries for scientific computation. And more specifically, it's for, uh, they're really targeted at sort of massively parallel computations for uh, distributed computing. Um, you can sort of think of Trilinos as uh, you know, just like in, as part of Python, we've learned a lot about SciPy, or we've used SciPy. And SciPy has access to uh, solvers and optimization routines and all these sorts of things. Well, much in the same way, Tr Trilinos provides those uh, packages. Most of Trilinos, not all of it, most of it uh, is written in C++. Uh, Uh, in an object-oriented way that provides uh, access uh, or an application programming interface, an API, to many packages. So loosely translated uh, from Greek, Trilinos means a, a string of pearls. And the idea here is that uh, Trilinos is actually a collection of lots of packages, and each of them uh, a pearl in their own right, if you will. And the f philosophy behind Trilinos is that we want to minimize the package interdependence. So what that means is that uh, each package has sufficient functionality uh, that it can stand alone by itself and, and provide some functionality to the user. Um, but when you want to combine some of these packages, we want to make sure that they're interoperable, that they do work together if we choose to do so. Okay, and the website is here, and we're going to go to that website in just a few minutes. But uh, briefly, I want to go over some of the packages in Trilinos. Uh, there's many, many packages, over 30, I think, now. And, uh, but let's go over some of the important ones really quickly. So probably the most important uh, is a Petra. Okay, so Petra, of course, is a city in Jordan, but it's also... Uh, Greek word for foundation. So you can think of a Petra as uh, the essential. Oops. Foundation. Of Trilinos. Okay? So what is in a Petra then is a set of massively parallel or distributed data structures. So vectors, these are equivalent to, uh, you know, like STL vectors in C++ or Python arrays or NumPy arrays, rather, uh, except they're, they can be distributed across uh, a distributed network, you know, supercomputer. Uh, in addition to that, it provides maps, which uh, maps are essentially uh, things that, that map global to local coordinate systems on a distributed network. Um, by the way, we're going to have an entire lecture, or maybe two, just on a Petra by itself. Uh, so I'm just going to briefly go over some of these ideas. So, so we have vectors and maps, and then we have a bunch of uh, sparse row matrix uh, or matrix type uh, data structures, so ways to store matrices and graphs. Uh, graphs essentially uh, in the context of scientific computing or in the context of a Petra, typically are uh, define the sparsity structure of the matrix. And there's other things. So again, we're going to have more uh, a whole lecture on a Petra, if not two. So I'm not going to go into a lot more detail. But then uh, JPetra is just another implementation of a Petra that is all in Java. So the J is for Java. So, you know, as I said on the last side, slide, most of Trilinos is written in C++, but not all of it. Uh, T-Petra is the next generation, or templated, of Petra. Because 
The Petra, all of the data types are hard-coded to be d of type double. Um, but of course, well, I say all, most of the data structures, the vectors for sure, and the, and the matrices are hard-coded to be of type double. And of course, sometimes, uh, you know, we would rather have single precision numbers or possibly complex numbers or any other type. Uh, so in C++, if you're familiar with C++, then you're familiar with the templated lingo. So um, uh, T Petra is the templated version of a Petra. And then a, Pe a Petra EXT is just extensions to that. So it offers graph coloring algorithms and um, uh, some parallel read-write capabilities, the ability to write out data to, say, HDF5 format and other things. Uh, so once we have a Petra such that we can construct vectors and matrices, then we can tie into these many solvers. So a Mesos is a direct solver, a direct linear algebra solver. So what I mean by direct, you know, it's going to solve the matrix equation. Um, I'm sorry. It's going to solve uh, the matrix equation for x, of course. And it's going to do it in a direct way. So when I say direct way, it's going to do it by inverting A directly. So. So uh, Amazos is a direct solver. Aztec OO is an iterative solver. Uh, so this is going to use like Gauss-Seidel or Jacobi-type iteration algorithms, actually more, more advanced than those, but uh, those are the simple types. Uh, Balos is the next generation uh, iterative solver. And complex is just uh, works hand in hand with Aztec OO to provide uh, complex number uh, solves. Uh, there's a nonlinear solver package, NOx. So this is for solving nonlinear systems of equations uh, of the type, uh, you know, say f u equals zero. F is a function of u, where u is a vector equals to zero. That's uh, NOx solves for u in these type of equations, where this this would be a nonlinear function. And there's many. Uh, I mean, just a. a multitude of uh, options available within Knox. Uh, Newton, quasi-Newton method, nonlinear conjugate gradients, uh, many, many f ways to do line searches, and uh, th there's almost just an infinite number of combinations that you can, uh, you know, uh, combinations of tools that you can use within Knox to solve this equation. Of course, some better than others for, for the application. Uh, there's other types of solvers. Anasazi is an eigenvalue solver. Uh, Rhythmos is a, is a sort of a ODE time integrator uh, with some advanced kind of multi-step algorithms and, and stuff. So you can think of this as like, you know, in MATLAB you have ODE 4.5. This is the parallel ODE 4.5 on steroids, if you will. So it has much more advanced uh, solvers than just simple 4.5 run to cut in there. Uh, Mucho is an is a optimization, uh, constrained optimization solver. And then there's also uh, call it, uh, preconditioners like IFPAC and ML. Um, these can, when, when we go back to talk about interoperability, while uh, any of these solvers can be used on their own to solve a system of equations, um, we could also use the interoperability of the packages, say Aztec OO and IFPAC, to do first precondition a matrix before we send it to an iterative solver uh, such that we can get a faster solution. ML is a, is a uh, multi-grid multi or multi-level uh, preconditioner. Some other tools, uh, Tethos uh, defines oh, uh, parameter lists, which are sort of uh, how uh, options, are set, options or settings are passed around in between the packages. So they wanted to have a, for interoperability, you wanted to have a common sort of language for passing around options. And Tethos provides some of that, and and uh, you know other kind of numeric tools, and um, uh, well, in C++ it provides reference counted pointers and other things. But as far as what we're gonna you know later use in PyTrilinos, the only thing that really matters is the is the parameter lists. 
Isorobia is a is an Apetra wrapper to Zoltan. So Zoltan is a has been around a long time, and it's a load balancing tool. So um, you know what Zoltan Zoltan will do. Well, if you have a body that's a finite element mesh. That's a, not a very good finite element mesh, but nevertheless, Zoltan will then partition that body into equal partitions such that these partitions can be sent to different processors uh, in an equal way for, uh, for the job. So this is called load balancing. And Zoltan can load balance in many different ways, uh, graph partitioning algorithms and other things. So uh, Isoropia is an Petra interface to that, and that's how we'll use it from PyTrilinos. Okay, so PyTrilinos is itself a package, but uh, that that basically provides. Well, before before we go on to PyTrilinos, let's take a look. I mean, I only listed just a few, just a handful. Uh, of the packages that are available. Uh, so let, let's go ahead and take a look at the Trilinos website real quick. Uh, this is actually PyTrilinos, but if you go to uh, just trilinos.sandia.gov, then here's the main page. And if you click on Packages, you'll get a full list with short description of all the packages. Also here on the left side, these are all the packages that are part of Trilinos, all the libraries. And so there's short descriptions of each of them along the way. If you have one in particular that you'd like to know more about, say Knox, you can click on that and it'll bring you to just a very short introduction screen where all the different releases going back to release four and the documentation available. The most up-to-date documentation is almost always going to be here under development. So if you click on development, uh, then you can read through and, and there'll be more information. So every package here has its own uh, documentation page. And this is, you know, some are going to be more documented than others. They'll all have this uh, deoxygenated kind of, um, uh, if you're familiar with C++ and, and object-oriented programming and such, you'll have this, uh, then you probably have heard of deoxygen, and it's a way to sort of automatically um, document your source code. So this is all drawn automatically from the source code of Trilinos. But if you go back to the main page, then you know here's going to be some uh, probably more useful information. Like if you click on Knox user information, then it's going to tell you you know how to call your Knox from your code and Knox configuration options and stuff and such. So uh, this is sort of you know if you want to get around the uh, if you want to get around and, and learn more about these packages, then just go to tr trilinos.sandia.gov, click on packages. And then you know here they're all available to you there. So on to PyTrilinos. It's just the Python wrappers for not all, but many of the most useful uh, Trilinos packages or libraries are available. So um, it uses actually Swig, which we learned about, and there was a lecture in the course earlier on to automatically generate these wrappers, and it's fully compatible with NumPy. What that means is that these Apetra vectors, we can uh, basically populate them with data from NumPy arrays, and when we want to extract data from them, they are returned as NumPy arrays. So we can operate on the data in a, uh, the way we operate on NumPy arrays in broadcasting or, or other methods like that. And then here's just our, our first, you know, Hello World program that we're going to use PyTrilinos or specifically uh, Apetra from PyTrilinos. And again, there's going to be a whole lecture, lecture on Apetra, so I don't want to spend too much time on it, but let's just go over to the command line real, real quickly to get a feel for what we want to do. So if we go ahead and uh, open up a file, say, hello world PyTry, uh, and I've just got a shebang line in there right now, nothing else, but uh, if we then go down and uh, say, from PyTrilinos, import a Petra. One of the things a Petra provides is wrappers around the MPI COM or MPI World COM. And uh, one of the nice things that it provides is this, let me say, a Petra PyCom. 
And what that allows us to do is uh, it basically creates some logic behind the scenes that understands whether this is a serial or a parallel job and allows us to run this code in either serial or parallel uh, whether or not this communicator is in there. So uh, anyway, it, it just allows us to run it serial parallel without any kind of additional logic. That's, that's the point. And so with that, then we can just write a simple Hello World program. Um, of course, in parallel, we want to say my processor is so that we can then report. And the interface is a little bit different, but what we're going to say is com my PID. So in a way, it's a little different, but maybe even a little more intuitive. So my PID stands for my processor ID, as opposed to the MPI attribute, which would be rank, of course. So anyway, I think we should be able to run this then. So if we uh, make it executable, And then just type uh, MPIEXEC number of processors to Python hello Python. And there we go. And the nice thing is, again, we can run this on one processor and get without an error or without any additional logic. So that's our first um, PyTrolinos Hello World program. and. Uh, We'll be following this up with individual lectures that go into a lot more detail about uh, the data structures that Petra offers us and, and how to interface with some of those solvers we mentioned.